Thank you and welcome to today's session. On behalf of everyone here at Oxford, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to each and every one of you and also take this opportunity to acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional custodians of the land where we live, learn and work. I'm delighted to hand you over to Joanna Lake, Senior Publisher here at Oxford. And Joanna is going to take you through what I think is a unique range of new resources that we hope are going to support you in developing your students phonic and comprehension skills. Thanks Charlene. My name is Joanna Lake and I am the Senior Publisher for Literacy at Oxford University Press Australia and New Zealand and I'm really delighted to be talking you through our brand new series today, Oxford Reading for Comprehension Decodables. And you can see here a couple of the lovely books that we're going to have a peek at today. So I'd like to start today with a quote, and it is, the two vital aspects to becoming an accomplished and motivated reader, word recognition and language comprehension processes, are brought together in this exciting new series. And that quote's from Laura Sharp, who's a phonics expert. She's worked for many years in the UK in phonics teaching and in developing resources uh, around phonics. And I've had the benefit of working with her as I was developing the series. Laura has worked on the letters and sounds framework, so she's very au fait with that material. And she's also worked with many schools over the years implementing phonics in the classroom. So it's wonderful to have such encouraging from words from her about our new series. So I'm going to start off today with a um, diagram, which I think many of you will have seen before and will be familiar with. And it's the simple view of reading. This diagram is really the foundation of this new series and is something that I thought about a lot when we were putting the resources together. It's quite simple, but what it's showing us is that there are two key areas of skill development that we think about when we think about developing a successful reader. One is strong word reading and there are strong ties there to phonics and high frequency words. And then we've got the other key area, strong comprehension. And when thinking about resources for early readers, the basis of this series is thinking about developing those two skill categories together so that students are having a growing skill in word reading, but also developing their comprehension skills so that as they're reading these new words and decoding these new words, they're developing strong comprehension skills to help them understand what they're reading. So in our session today, I'm going to walk you through the phonics structure and the comprehension framework that the series is based on. And then we're going to go through the components and look how each of those support skill development. So really making that connection between these two skills that we're looking to develop in our students and the features in the different components for students and teachers that will help and we hope support that development. So a few key things about Oxford Reading for Comprehension Decodables. We feel it's a unique series and it's been created here in Australia and features some really beautiful Australian content. All of the titles support both the development of phonic knowledge and comprehension skills. Phonic knowledge is supported through a really structured phonic framework, so a, a strong structure to the introduction of sounds, of GPCs, um, those grapheme phoneme correspondences. And we also have our comprehension skills framework, which is implementing a consistent way to develop skill development. And when we talk about a just consistent way, what does that mean? Well, it means using a consistent language around comprehension. So students become able to talk about the skill of comprehension and talk about what they're doing in comprehension and also teaching the strategies and skills together. And so having this consistent way that you implement some comprehension development in your guided reading sessions that build a framework for you, to, you and your students to use together. The introduction of sounds in this series is done through both a fiction and non-fiction title, which really helps with strong early vocabulary acquisition, so decodable words across both fiction stories and non-fiction texts. We also have non-fiction texts from the earliest level, which I'm sure many of you will be thinking is a little bit different to some of the other series that you've seen, which mostly focus on fiction. So we've worked really hard to include non-fiction all the way through through this series, as I mentioned, from the start, 
to give students um, opportunities to read nonfiction um, right from the beginning, both engaging them in fiction topics, but also allowing them to have exposure to nonfiction text types and nonfiction features such as labels, captions, and various things as we go up through the levels. We've also incorporated the Oxford word list, those high frequency words that I know lots of schools are using. Um, and we've aligned this to the phonic progression. So showing which words from the um, Oxford word list you can introduce so that you're introducing decodable high frequency words. So as I mentioned, uh, we've got these two key structures that we have underpinning this series. We've got our phonics framework, which is aligned to letters and sounds. And we've got our comprehension skills framework, which we're going to look at in a little bit more detail. So here we're looking at the letters and sounds structure. And I just wanted to give an idea of the level of detail that's included in our phonics structure. We really control all elements of our word introduction in series. And this really goes to the decodability and also the levelling of the books making sure that students are being presented with text that they can access and that they can have a successful read with, which will really build their motivation as they move through the texts. So I've just got two examples here, a fiction and a non-fiction. As I mentioned, they're paired. So here we've got Buzz the Bot and I Can. And you can see here highlighted the letters and sounds phase. You've got your focus GPCs being introduced. If you've got high frequency words, they're listed. And you can also see here we've got built out things like adjacent consonants. Are they included? Here they're not. Um, whether there are contractions and if there are any suffix and endings. So you get a really clear idea of exactly what's being introduced in these books. And it really helps with that modelling before the set reading session starts. And also it helps you choose books that you think will be most appropriate for your students. This is an overview of the full series. You can see there's 60 books all together going from phase one to phase six and our Oxford levels one to nine, covering foundation to year two. We've obviously got our phonics structure, but what I also wanted to point out here is that these books as with all our Oxford reading texts are really meticulously leveled by our team. So that both phonic i.e. the sequence that we're using is covered and introduced in that structured progressive way, but also other levelling criteria that you would be used to be seeing in level texts are taken into account. And this is really ensuring skill progression across word reading and supporting that comprehension, which we're going to talk about next. So this is our comprehension skills framework. The skills framework is based on the findings of multiple international studies into how children develop comprehension skills and the effective teaching of comprehension skills. Professors Jane Oakhill and Kate Kane have been significant contributors to research in this area and they've advised us on the development of the framework and the development and use of the associated metacognitive strategies, which we're going to have a look at in some of the components. So you can see here, we've got a comprehension skill category and we've got comprehension strategies. So comprehension strategies are the things that readers are doing in the moment of reading to help them take information from the text. After reading, they may use a combination of information gathered via those different comprehension strategies and apply that together to show one of these skills. So the skills are finding information, so taking that little literal information from the text, making connections and inferences, understanding vocabulary, really important, understanding structure and organisation, looking at how the order of information in the text, key ideas, main information, um, and how that helps us understand the text, and then also appreciating the author's toolkit. So thinking about how language and punctuation and author's intent can influence comprehension and our understanding of the text. So let's now have a look at the components in the series. So as you've seen, there are 60 fully decodable fiction and nonfiction texts in pairs. And you can see some of the covers there below. We've got a teacher handbook, which is supporting implementing some of these comprehension skill development in the classroom, as well as phonics skills. We've got downloadable phonics and comprehension coaching notes, one for every text. And we're going to look in those in more detail because they really support phonic and comprehension skill development during the guided reading session. We've got 60 phonic and comprehension activity sheets, one for each book. 
We've got lots of great materials on Oxford Owl, which you'll have free access to. And excitingly, we've also got an e-bookshelf with all 60 titles on it. So here are some lovely covers. I thought I would just start off by showing those to you. You can see here some of the wonderful illustrated storybooks that we've got or fiction texts that we've got, which I really love across a wide range of subjects and lots of different styles to engage students. On the bottom, you can see some of our wonderful nonfiction, some beautiful texts, um, which we'll look at a bit more as we go through. So first of all, the guided reading texts, obviously a core component to your guided reading session. So first thing I thought I would show you is just the quick reference information that we've included on the back cover of each book. So obviously, when you're looking for a text, you're looking for a text that is going to help you support and consolidate the sounds of the GPCs that you're introducing with your students. So we've made that easy. On the back cover of each text, you can see all that information in one spot for you. So you can see the level, if it's a fiction or non-fiction text, the letters and sounds information, and then you've got those phonic focus, so those GPCs that we're focusing on in this text. So that's the new sounds introduced in the text. And here you can see that's g, o, k, k. And then we've got the high frequency words listed. So here, got, can, not, on. And just reminding you that it's always fully decodable or the internal text is fully decodable. So that straight away gives you an idea of that focus information. And if you wanted to, that's the information that you could immediately go to and the first thing that you talk to students about in your guided reading session. On the inside front cover, we've got some notes and on the back, this is in addition to the phonics and comprehension coaching notes, but these notes are quite simple. And if you have some parents coming in to read with students or the classroom, or you might have a teacher's aide that's helping you out, this is a really great guide for them to support students as they read. So this is something that they could do before reading. So say the sounds out loud, a reminder of those new sounds to have that fresh in your student's mind. We've got our high frequency words listed to have a practice before we start. And just a reminder that if students do come across a word and they're finding it difficult, just to remind them to go back to that segmenting and blending because each word will be fully decodable and they will be able to sound it out. Similarly, we've got some comprehension notes in the back for those who might be assisting with reading. We've got some before, during notes with a couple of questions to take prior knowledge and predict. And then we've got some during reading questions, which are really going to ask students to uh, comprehend the text and, and therefore answer some questions. And then we've just got a, a guide for what you might do after reading. So let's have a look inside the books. As I mentioned, new sounds are introduced by fiction and nonfiction, which we think is a really great feature of the series. Um, and it's been really wonderful for us to challenge ourselves to develop these fiction and non-fiction texts together. So here you can see I've pulled out two titles from the series. We've got Pip the Kitten on the left, phase two, set two, and we've got Tin Pan Cook, phase two, set two. You can see here, you've got two totally different types of texts. We've got a story here. You can see something forming. We've got It Is Pip and Pip Tips a Tin. And that gives you an idea that maybe we've got a bit of a naughty kitten that's going to appear in this book. Whereas on the right-hand side, we've got some of those non-fiction features you'd expect to see in non-fiction books, but you don't always get the opportunity to show non-fiction in fully decodable. So here you can see we've got a label on one page and then we've got that text and we've got a non-fiction scenario about cooking. Obviously, this also gives us the opportunity to broaden out our vocabulary so we're using words stretching out across fiction and non-fiction, which really gives us an opportunity to use as many decodable words as possible and introduce students to as many words as possible that they can decode at these early stages. Here's one of our lovely fiction texts, one of my favourites, in fact. So just to point out some of the things that you'll find within each of the fiction books. So really engaging, fully decodable fiction texts. We've worked on really strong storylines and of course this helps us support comprehension development because there's lots for us to talk about with these books, lots of questions we can ask and this is really going to ask students not only to read and read the words but also to understand and think um, more deeply about the story. So we've got, um, as you can see, a wide variety of vocabulary. We've got coverage of our focus GPCs and you can see those for this book. And great stories and some really beautiful illustrations here. And just in case you were worried about the shark in the pool, I've given you the last page so you know it's only then. 
And here's another look at a nonfiction text. So you can see here some really beautiful photography, engaging books. This is all about dogs. Again, you can see it's fully decodable texts and they're really providing rich nonfiction reading experiences from Oxford Level 1, expanding vocabulary and also reading choice. As I mentioned a number of times, our nonfiction is all still fully decodable. What it is doing is it's providing those opportunities to read nonfiction at the early levels and provide, you know, a wider and richer reading experience for students. So let's talk a little bit about the phonics and comprehension coaching. So these notes can be used to support your guided reading sessions and they're supporting both that phonics skill development and the comprehension skill development. So they're going through those usual three parts of the guided reading session before reading, which you can see here. And this is an example from the series from Pip the Kitten. We saw a spread from that book earlier. Here, we're going to be looking at um, that beginning of the reading session. So I'm just going to run through how someone might use this in a guided reading session. So you can see right at the top, you've got the phonics focus. So this is where we would suggest that you run through with your students the new focus GPCs that students will be introduced to and will be reading in this book. So here it would be n, i, d, n, and you might get your students to say that with you or say that after you and then say them by themselves. So they'll really be remembering those sounds as they start the session. And then again, an opportunity to read through those new high frequency words. So these might have been introduced in your teaching session earlier in the week and you run through them again, giving that great prompt before you start reading. We also want to think about some comprehension before we start reading, because that's another important part before we start. So here, what we're doing is really using that comprehension framework, that consistent language at the beginning of the session. So here we're going to be practicing the ask questions strategy focus. So we'll say that to the students. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give a think aloud sentence that prompts us to use that strategy. So here for ask questions, it would be, what question can I ask that will help me understand this part of the text better? And you might like to use that think aloud as you go through the book to get students really using that strategy and practice that strategy as they read through the different parts of the story. And then we've got listed some activate prior knowledge questions. So some questions around the topic of the book and some predictions. So getting the students to think about what they think might happen in this story from the cover. The second page of this phonics and comprehension coaching is going to take you through the during reading part of the session and what you might do afterwards. So you can see at the top there where I've got that first box pointing to, these comprehension questions, there are questions for that you can use throughout the text. Now you could use all of them or you could just pick out a few. But what you'll notice is that each of them is tagged with a little symbol. And those symbols are those five skill areas in our comprehension skill framework. So you can either decide that you might want to ask questions around a particular skill category to see how students in the group are going with that. You might want to ask them from various skill categories to see how they're going. Um, so there's lots of flexibility here, but the questions that we've provided all obviously really relate to the text, are asking students to pull the information from the text out and are also are tagged with that so you can quickly see which questions you might like to ask or um, you might like to make a note of which questions the students are doing well at and which questions they're struggling with. That might be some anecdotal evidence that you're just noting down as you go through your session, which will help you when you're thinking about what you might like to do next with that group. Down below, you've then got some information about what you can do after reading. So there's a practical activity listed there, which covers lots of different type of group activities, all different things that you can do with the students. And it also points you to the activity sheet, which we're going to have a look at. There's one activity sheet for every book, and it's got more comprehension questions and a phonics question related to the text that the students have just read. Here's an example of an activity sheet. Again, all the questions are tagged. You'll notice that the first question on the activity sheet has a, a tag of a P and that's a phonics question. So you'll get a phonics question for every 
free text. And Phonics question will be based on the focus GPCs for that book. Underneath, you'll see there's a comprehension question. And you can see that one is tagged as an understanding structure and organisation. And it's about putting the events of the story in order. There may be two comprehension questions depending what level this book is at. This is a lower level, so we've just got two questions for those younger students. So let's just have a quick look at the teacher handbook. So there's so much information in here which is really helpful in implementing the series and just gives lots of support around phonics and comprehension in your classroom. So of course it's got an overview of the series, talks about the components, the underlying pedagogy and research that you might be interested in. There's lots of information about the phonic progression and that's completely listed out by book in the series. You can see how that progresses through the 60 books. We've got an overview of the comprehension research, that comprehension skills framework. You also get definitions of each of the strategies and skills. You get tips on how to introduce and model those strategies with your students and a reminder about each of those categories and that little key that we use throughout the series. We've got a really wonderful section on phonics in the classroom which includes some guidance and instruction for teacher-led activities that can be used as warm-ups, consolidation, and to embed phonics development through the day. Many of the activities involve using sound talk, so breaking words down into their component phonemes. So this section's really about using the series, but also taking phonics throughout the day. So just different times of the day that you can do a quick two-minute, three-minute activity, just getting those students constantly practicing those new sounds, which will really help them when they pick up these books to practice sounds in their reading. We've got a detailed phonics overview of every book in the series, and we've got some guidance on monitoring skill development in phonics and comprehension in your students. I just wanted to show you an example of the phonics breakdown for a book that you will find in the teacher handbook. It's really, really detailed. So for each book, you can see, and here it's a book, The Buzzing Bee, you can see you've got that information about letters and sounds. You've got those phonics, the new GPCs that are being introduced. And next to that, you've got every word in the book that has that GPC in it. So if you want to start off your session by going through those GPCs and then talking the students through some words that it's included in, you've got that here. You don't need to do that yourself. It's all done for you. Again, it looks at the new high frequency words that are introduced with the pages they appear on. Again, if you'd like to do a practice before. And then we've got some developing vocabulary. So any words, again, these are all fully decodable, but they're words that may provide an extra level of challenge through, say, a double letter you can see there, or perhaps a suffix, the ing suffix there. So we've listed those out in case you want to have a look at those with students. And again, words with suffix and endings are listed. So very, very controlled introduction of GPCs, but also lots of information about how that features in the book so that you've got the opportunity to do some before reading practice. You may want to focus on those words in one of your sessions. It's really all broken down for you. So on Oxford Owl, we've got lots of support materials. You can see on the right-hand side of this slide, that's the Oxford Owl homepage for ORC decodables. You can access all the coaching notes, download and print them from here, as well as the activity sheets. We've got Think Aloud and Strategy flashcards, which you can use with those before reading notes in the comprehension coaching. So we provide flashcards with those Think Alouds that you might be using with the students. You can hold those up. You can get the students to hold them up if you'd like to do that. I know some students don't find that helpful, but there are groups of students that really find that supportive. We've got graphic organisers, a really great um, activity for comprehension skill development. So we've got those that you can download, some assessment record templates and that guidance on the Oxford word list that I mentioned. You can also access the ebook library from here. And here you can see some more of the wonderful titles and lovely covers from the series. So we'll have all 60 books available for additional in-class or at-home practice. Whole school access to the e-book shelf is free for schools that adopt the full print series. And your sales rep and sales consultants can talk to you more about that.
So what I thought we'd move to now is just go through any questions people might have from my presentation. I'll just kick off with a question that someone wrote previously. Is there a suggested framework for acquiring high frequency words and sight words, particularly irregular words? Well, I can talk to the order that you might introduce them in your class. So as I mentioned, this series includes um, a very structured introduction of um, high frequency words, and those are decoded but also some of those what we call tricky words, which are words that students need to know so that they can really start reading sentences. So those are set out in our phonic framework. And we also have a poster which has those on there. So one way that you might introduce them is just spend a little bit of time going through those with the class in the order in which you're going to be reading the books and introducing your GPCs. Um, and that'll really start to give you some good coverage. The other thing is that we have our Oxford word list aligned to the letters and sounds phonic framework. And you could use that to add some additional words from the Oxford word list into your high frequency word sessions that you are having um, perhaps as part of your literacy sessions um, one or two days a week. I hope that answers that question there. We've got something from Laura. How do these readers match with existing benchmark texts? like PM? Well, in terms of levelling, um, general levelling, I think you'll see a correlation. The difference with these is the decodability. So PM texts are not fully decodable, so they don't use a phonic sequence to introduce sounds. So that's the difference here. There is other levelling criteria and things about early text that you'll find are similar. Layout, some support from illustrations, you know, numbers of words on the page. So those sort of things will be the same, but what you'll see with our books is that um, the only words included are words that include the sounds students have already been taught alongside those high frequency words that are aligned to those sounds. If you've got any more questions on that, feel free to talk to your sales consultant about that and they can raise that with me. We can get you some more information if that would help. I think we've got, at what point do teachers move students away from decodables? Great question. I think what you'll see is that by the time you get to the end of our books in this series, say level nine, what you're seeing in those texts is a really wide variety of vocabulary because students can really decode everything that is decodable in the English language. And what they'll start to be reading in levels eight and nine are words that have some like a digraph or a trigraph that makes a sound only in that word or a handful of other words. So they'll start to be exposed to that. Once they've read those books, and that's hopefully in year two, you would be wanting to move students into um, what you might call richer reading and off decodables. But really what you will have done at that point is given students time to practice and consolidate all those common GPCs some of the rarer ones that appear in, you know, a good number of words and then exposing them to some vocabulary where they're seeing some of those um, very rare um, GPCs and they'll then really be ready to go off and move out of um, a structured decodable um, reading experience. Amber says, are tricky words essentially sight words? Yes, tricky words are words where, like the, so it's not decodable at the time you introduce it, but they are sight words, those words that students need to know in order to be reading sentences um, and reading some meaningful text and therefore having an opportunity to read something that they really are going to um, need to dig into to comprehend. So yeah, tricky words could be thought of as sight words and some other different programs, they're called other things. But yes, in our, in our series, tricky words, sight words. Joe, is there an assessment for each level so you can put the student on the correct level? We do provide some guidance for doing some check-ins on how students are going um, with the different sets of sounds, and that will give you an idea of where students might be at, and then you can go back um, and really have a look at those books where they're struggling with maybe some of the GPCs and really revisit those GPCs and do some more practice with that. You know, you'll also be picking up some anecdotal evidence from your students in the sessions where you might be seeing, um, you know, a real grouping of words or grouping of sounds that they're struggling to sort of sound out or they're really struggling with that segmenting or blending in the session. And that might be adding to your thoughts about them needing to go back and revise some of those sounds. 
Question from Melissa. What framework do you draw your comprehension skills and strategies from in order to support students from K to 2? Well, we've drawn those from that research-based comprehension skills framework. So what was done was that there was a really broad review of academic literature on comprehension skills development in the early years. And from that, we developed that um, framework. So you may be using another comprehension framework, but what you'll see, I think, if you look at it in a little bit more detail, and we include it in the evaluation pack that you're going to get, so you can have a look at that, you'll see the way we describe them will link up to very recognisable skill categories that you might be using already. But where our skill framework comes from is really from the research around um, early skill development, and we've used that to build those list of strategies and those list of skills. Lucinda, how do they differ or supplement, say, decodable Australia books or the spelled books? So I think what we all students need is lots of practice with decoding and lots of practice with reading. So in terms of how they differ or supplement, I think one of the differences is the inclusion of nonfiction. I think Decodable Readers Australia, I know, don't include nonfiction text. So, you know, you might want to have some nonfiction reading in your guided reading session. So this could supplement that. Um, there's also some really great and varied stories in our series and you can use them alongside, you know, it's really um, the opportunity opportunity for more books for practice. You do also get that support across the comprehension with ours using the school framework, but yes, could be used alongside those. Some questions about the assessment template. So in terms of the assessment templates, they include some questions you might ask or how you might assess comprehension. There's some guidance for that in the teacher handbook and then a template that you use with that with your students and the same with the phonics and those are on Oxford OWL if you'd like to have a look. Do frameworks match closely to Department of Education frameworks? Yes, I think you'll see when you have a look, the comprehension skill framework is really covering off those key areas of comprehension mentioned in the various curriculums we have, you know, around literal comprehension, which is sort of, sort of finding comprehension school category for us, inference, really about structure and organisation. And of course, we've got the author toolkit really looking at language. Um, so I really think you'll see the connections there. So do you have any books that focus more on grouping extended code together? Um, well, as you get up into the higher levels, the, you will see those, those appearing together. Yes. So there's an opportunity. It builds as it goes through. So as things are introduced, you will then see what has come before as well as what's been added. So you start to see those broad coverage of those words together. And you can look through those tables in the teacher handbook um, that I pointed out in the session, and you can look and see where those words are coming up. And Donna asks, I'll just have this as the final question, should we adopt your scope and sequence of graphemes to use the books? Good question, Donna. I mean, there's different ways to approach this. I will say, you know, the letters and sounds sequence that we use is really rigorous. And we've got a framework and a structure that goes from the first sounds to those words that I was talking about in levels, um, Oxford levels eight and nine, which are really the much rarer GPC. So you get a huge and rigorous coverage of sounds and you'll really build up those decoding skills using that. That said, if you are using a different scope and sequence, you know, you can definitely still use our books. You can look at the right opportunity to introduce our books alongside your sequence. You know, obviously different um, publishers, um, different schools use different sequences. You know, we do have a really broad range of texts available to our sequence. So um, that's the other thing is that, you know, if you're using our all RFC decodables, you can use the other fully decodable texts that are available from Oxford, and that will give you a really broad range. And we do also have teaching program aligned to letters and sounds, which could give you that um, first introduction of the sounds as well to support you. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time today. I will just go to our final slide now, which has got a link to the website page for the series if you'd like to have a look. If you do have any more questions that come up as you, as you think about the session today, feel free to send them in um, and we'll get back to you with a response. Thanks again for joining us and we look forward to talking to you all soon.